thanks for joining me today. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can use Google Maps and a Google Form or Google Sheets to create an exploratory lesson for your students. Now, what we're going to talk about can be used for almost any subject, um, and it involves using My Maps with Google. If you've ever been to maps.google.com slash mymaps, you have the ability to create your own map for a lesson in your classroom. And I'm going to do that now. I'm going to click on here and hit create a new map. And it's going to take a second to, look, to load here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this Spanish Explorers. I'm going to do this for a history class. And what I want is for my students to be able to see on a map the different places, the different locations that explorers have been um, prior to the settling of the American continent, the North American continent. But you might be asking yourself, well, can't we see that anywhere else on the web already? And the truth is, yes, you can. But with Google Forms, you can actually make it an assignment so that your kids do the research and find those locations and submit them and they get to create their own class map using Google Maps and Google Forms. So it's kind of neat. It gives them a chance to create something and it gives them a little bit more uh, ownership of what you're making. So right here I've named this map and when you're on Google Maps on your own created map you have the ability to import data from a CSV file. So where we're going to get that is from the Google Sheet that shows our collected responses from a Google Form. Now I've already created a Google Form here. It's called Spanish Explorers and I've created a few questions and of course since this is going to be an assignment I want to know who submitted the work so I am asking the students to submit their name and their class period. But for this example I have them list the name of their explorer and the site or the discovery they're referencing with a one or two sentence explanation of that discovery and then the location. Now this is really important. You can use latitude and longitude coordinates if you know them and you can google most of those coordinates and find them for most any city or state but it's just as easy just for them to enter the city and state or the city and country for their entry and that's fine so you have to have that on there. Um, so basically this information, the location question, that is going to be where the pin is going to be dropped on the map. And then this information up here is going to be uh, the extra information, the explanation that goes along with that pin. I've set it up so that the form has a nice little appearance to it so it, it, it kind of gives it a fun appearance so that the kids can fill it out. And I'm going to go ahead and flip over to my Google Sheet where my responses are. I've opened that and you can see I have two entries right now. These are entries that I just made up. A couple of students entered a listing for Salazar and one for Ponce de Leon. And I have all the information that I need here. I have a location and I also have a little bit of information for the pin that's dropped on the map. So if we go back to our Spanish Explorers map that we created, I'm ready to import my data so I click on import. And if it's not already on Google Drive, just click on My Drive to import your file. There's my Spanish Explorers response sheet. So I click on it and then click Select. And it retrieves the data. And so now it's asking me to choose the column to position my place marks. Now, my pins need to be dropped based on the location, so I select location. And then you can choose a column to title your markers. And for that column, I'm going to use the Explorer question where my students entered the name of the Explorer, the dates of, of his birth and death, and then a little bit of information that they've supplied for the, the project. I click Finish, and it loads that data, and then it reloads the map, and you can see it's dropped pins on the map for each of those Explorers that those students listed. Now, if you click on the, the pin drop, you can see the information that the student provided. It's right there. Okay. And, um, you know, that, that makes it easy for anybody to navigate around this map and find that information. And it becomes a learning tool that the class has created. Now, you'll notice that both of these pin drops are red. 
and right here where it says individual styles I can change that and because I have set it up so that the students enter their class period on the form I can separate those by class period and what it will do is it will co color the pin drops from each class period a different color and you can choose the color uh, if you want to uh, to make it a little bit more obvious on the map. Now it just so happens I've entered some information for another explorer so I'm going to go back to that form and submit that information and it has updated the spreadsheet and so what we're going to do is we're going to reload the map and what you'll find is it doesn't actually add that information if new information comes in after the map is created so you'll want to wait and create the map after all submissions are in in this case what I can do is I can delete this layer and I can start all over again by adding a new layer and importing that data again. Here we are back at our response sheet. I click select. It retrieves that information. It has me go through the process again. So I'll select location and explorer. And I click finish. And now instead of two pin drops on the map, I should have three. And it broadens the range of the map a little bit so you can see all three of them on there. And I'm going to change the individual styles back to class period so that we can see the differences between which pins were dropped and which class period. Now, of course, you can use this My Maps activity with uh, just a regular Google Sheet. You don't have to create a form, but if you create a form that students fill out, it allows them to submit their own information about an explorer. Uh, if you wanted to set this up on your own, you could also make um, just create a sheet with some column headers. I will tell you there are certain characters that you cannot have in your column header such as uh, brackets, parentheses, commas, periods. You can't have those in the column headers so you need to have just a one or two word description in the column header. And then provide at least a location and then some information to place on the marker and you created your own map. To give you a couple of examples of what this might look like, I have a couple of activities. Let me show you those. So right now I'm on a different account. I'm going to open one of my previously used maps. And one of these is the Odyssey. I created a map of the geography of the Odyssey. And basically we put different markers on the map for Land of the Cyclops. You know, if you click on it, it on over here in the menu, it jumps straight to that location on the map. And you can see where those are. Uh, which is kind of interesting. For kids that are reading the Odyssey, they may not have really registered in their mind where some of these locations are as they're reading them in the story. So this is kind of a good learning tool to give them an idea of geographically where in the world some of those places are in the story. And then another map that I have is Geography of the Grapes of Wrath. Now this is a good example of how you can add information to your markers. For instance, this is a map showing the journey of the Jode family from the Grapes of Wrath starting in Oklahoma and going across the country to their final destination in California. And along the way on some of these markers I've added photos that I found that were taken from the Grapes of Wrath, the Grapes of Wrath movie. Uh, not all of the markers have a photo but as you can see here it kind of aligns the story up with the movie if you, if you wanted to show that in class. And then for the final pin marker, uh, I have a YouTube video of the I'll Be There speech from Tom Joad. So again, this is just a great learning tool. It's very simple to set up uh, using Google Sheets. If you have questions about how to do this, please let me know. Otherwise, just watch this video again and you can see how to set up the form and then retrieve your information and put it in your map.